Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today it's a little bit of an odd one. As you can see by the title of the video, we're looking at how to actually kill an SSD. Now we all know that writing to any flash media is the quickest way to actually kill it, but how do we do that? How long does an SSD actually last? Now, chances are, if you've used a lot of systems or you've just been using uh, SSDs for quite some time, you may have had one go bad on you, it slowed down, it might have gone into write protection mode depending on whether the SSD supported it, or it might have just stopped. So there's a lot of different ways that SSDs go ahead and die, but let's go ahead and actually try to kill one. I mean, we just write to it, right? Well. The answer is kind of yeah. So to actually kill an SSD, obviously writes are going to be the most important thing to do to it. So we're going to go ahead and use a software called Anvil to just write to the actual drive. It has an endurance testing mode, which is what I've used in that video right there and a lot of videos to actually test uh, the write endurance of a drive. So basically that's what I did. I grabbed an SSD in this particular case. I grabbed the Shikanan N100. It's a uh, 32 gigabyte drive we checked out. In that video right there. The reason why I grabbed it, it was the cheapest SSD I had and well at the start of the video I had actually assumed it would be really easy to kill, which is a bit of a spoiler alert, it wasn't. Um, and I went ahead and just plugged it in and hit go on the Anvil tests and waited and waited and waited. It was quite a long wait. To be 100% honest, I thought we'd write to it constantly for maybe a week or two and then it would die. But no, that wasn't exactly the case. In this particular test, it took me just over three months for the actual thing to completely die and just stop showing up. Um, there was a point where it stopped writing and I thought, hey, it's dead, finally test over. And then I unplugged it, rebooted the system, plugged it in, and it came back to life. So that was a little bit unfortunate. We continued. And at the end of the about three month uh, test that right here, about 90 some days, uh, we went ahead and clocked up a total of 210 terabytes written to this guy at a measly 39 megabytes per second sustained writes to this particular drive. And towards the end of the test, it was so slow we were getting like 10 gigs a day. That's why you see the end of this graph kind of just completely flat because it just wasn't writing a whole bunch of data, it just didn't really do a whole lot. So, okay then, cool, a cheap OSSD that you can buy from Amazon got 210 terabytes written to it before it completely flat out died, and looking at the curve, I mean the first bit of performance isn't that bad compared to a lot of other things out there, and the answer is yeah, I mean it got that 210, the speed wasn't great, but it finally got there in the end, and for the such low price that it actually comes in at from Amazon, kind of a bit of a steal, but hold your horses right there. Don't go out and buy a cheap SSD because I wasn't exactly satisfied there. I knew that ma name brand manufacturers actually go ahead and put terabyte written ratings on their drives. So Samsung might rate a drive for 100 terabytes written. Crucial might rate one for 80 terabytes written. These big name manufacturers actually put a rating on these drives. These ones from Amazon are just, you get what you get. I might've got lucky, you might get a dud. Uh, so what about a real one? Well, if you remember that video right there back in 2018, I went ahead and reviewed the Crucial BX500. Now, at the time of reviewing it, I picked up quite a few drives. I picked up one for my system because my SSD was kind of really old and just needed being replacing just because it was like six years old, I think, at the time. I picked up a couple others for some other computers in the house, but I had one spare sitting on my shelf for quite a bit of time and I didn't really know what to do with it. But I thought this would be a great time to see what a name brand SSD can actually do. Now, sure, the uh, Crucial BX500 is more on the budget side. It's not the world's fastest high-end SSD. It doesn't have a DRAM cache and those types of things. But at the end of the day, it still represents a name brand manufacturer standing up behind a very decent product. So I thought, hey, throw it in the same exact test and see what we get. So that's exactly what we did. Grab that Crucial BX500. Now this is the 256 gigabyte model and uh, went ahead and just threw it in the system and again, waited and waited. I thought it would be longer, like six months kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll wait a little bit longer, six months, no worries. We'll sit down and make this video. I was wrong. 344 days to kill this thing and 1.1 petabytes of data was written to this before it completely cut out. Sure, towards the end, looking at this graph right here, it was a very slow write. I mean, I think in the last day uh, that I actually checked, it had written like two gigabytes and was just 
completely over it. There was errors everywhere. The little crucial uh, disk management software was like erroring out and going absolutely crazy. Things were going weird. At one point, it just stopped writing out right, just like the uh, cheapo SSD. Again, I thought it had died, rebooted the system a couple times, came back to life and worked just fine. It was absolutely crazy. Now, looking at these particular numbers, there was some interesting points. For instance, about the 700 terabyte mark was when things really started to slow down, and then it kind of just fell off a cliff almost completely to about two to three terabytes per day, or around that 30 megabyte per second rating. That said, at the 200 terabyte mark, um, there was some weird kind of pop-ups from the little crucial drive manager. I think I ended up losing the uh, pictures because it's just been so long since that actually happened. Um, but it kind of popped up with some weird errors just saying you should stop writing to it kind of makes sense this actual drive is only rated for 80 terabytes written and we were up to 200 at the time and got up to 1.1 petabytes so uh yeah that is something you want to take and consider right however looking at the actual graph this part of the section right here is when you're going to be really using the drive in its serviceable life this is playing games browsing the web whatever you might be doing this part of the graph kind of represents it this part and sort of the rest of it right here just doesn't matter. Uh, mainly because by the time you actually put this much data on your drive, it's really going to be super old at that point. For instance, my Samsung 840 Evo, the old school 840 Evo, has only done 34 terabytes written to it. And this guy is a scratch and cache disk for Premiere Pro, which means every time I edit a video, all these video files, the audio files, all get cached to this drive and then re uh, read off real quickly. So, um, I mean, it's being hit fairly hard. Uh, sure, it's not the hardest use case, but at the same time, it's a lot of time passed for such a low amount of data written. And for instance, if we take a look at my C drive back in 2018, it was the Crucial BX500. Again, it's only written 28.8 terabytes to the actual thing. and It's held up just fine. Again, we're not even up to 100 terabytes yet. And these things are still absolutely perfect. So in the real world, when you're using this thing day to day, you're never really gonna be hitting like a petabyte of data. Maybe yes, if you're using it as like a server cache or something like that, but then again, this is not a server part, so you shouldn't be expecting those types of numbers. So conclusion time, killing an SSD, is it possible to just write so much data it flat out dies? Obviously yes, and this is a problem in the server and enterprise space where you're using the firm caching and that kind of stuff, you throw a lot of writes at a drive, it's gonna die. However, on the consumer side, using it in your gaming PC, in your laptop, heck, even the flash memory modules in your phone, you're never really gonna be hitting the amount of data needed to actually kill it straight up just by writing data to it. SSDs are complex little things. In fact, you could even classify them as little computers. They've got onboard processors. In some cases, they've got RAM, they've got storage, PCBs, everything like that. There are so many other factors for an SSD to die before it actually hits too much data being written to it. And in my whole time of working on computers, the only SSD that I've seen die from writing too much data to it, obviously other than the ones that we saw here today, are ones that come out of servers that have been in production for like five years, being an SSD cache or something like that. It's not very common for them to actually flat out die. And in a lot of cases, our bigger manufacturers that have really decent products also put write protections on it. So the actual drive will go into a write lock mode where you can read your data off, but you can't write anything to it. Intel was pretty popular, one of the first people to do this. I believe Samsung also too does this on their SSDs and a couple other manufacturers here and there where the SSD will hit a predefined number and just stop writing to it. You can read all your data off so you could boot Windows up and yeah, it'd kind of go a little bit weird, but you could still in theory pull data off or just plug it into a SSD toaster and pull off all your data there. So there is a lot of safety guards built into these particular drives and the fact that they're so complex you're most likely going to have something to do with power delivery fail or the controller fail before the actual flash fails from writing to these drives. But hey, it was definitely a cool little test and uh, why not let me know down in that comment section how many terabytes of data has been written to your SSD. If you want to check out Anvil and I really don't recommend benchmarking your drives in this way, but I'll leave Anvil linked down in that description box, along with the BX500 and also to that cheapo Shikinan Amazon drive. And just a disclaimer, yes, you may end up getting a dud unit. However, keep your warranties in check and um, get yourself a warranty swap. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.